Good morning, church. It is right about time to get started. I'm glad those of you that made it that made it. Are y'all feeling the time change? Dragging just a little bit this morning? I know I am. I definitely feel that missing hour of sleep. But glad that y'all are here. If you're watching online or later on on our Facebook or YouTube, we're glad you're watching along with us as well. I've got a couple quick announcements I want to run through, and I'm going to try to do them in order of date. So this week is spring break. And since this week is spring break, there won't be Wednesday night supper, youth, or block party this Wednesday. The choir stuff, choir rehearsal, and handbells, those will still happen. So if you're a volunteer for children's or youth, don't come because nobody else will be here. But if you are in choir or handbells, still come because y'all will rehearse. All right, uh, Easter lilies can be ordered now through March 22nd. March 22nd is two weeks from this past Friday. So in about two weeks, those order forms were closed. We won't be able to get any more because Easter this year is March 31st. It's coming up really, really fast. Speaking of Easter, there's kind of some things that have stacked up and we need to do some spring cleaning. So on March 23rd from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., we're going to go through the whole church and we're going to start cleaning things out and reorganizing. And this process actually already started uh, through a couple folks and our children's council and people like that. But we're going to continue the process on the 23rd. So if you can come and help and help us throw things away, help us put things in different spots, we would greatly, greatly appreciate your help. Uh, the Blue Bonnet Methodist Preschool fundraiser that happened a couple weeks ago, I don't know if y'all were there, but you would have seen me speak with a really bad French accent if you were. It ended up raising over $13,000 to go towards scholarship for our families. It was a great, great thing. Okay, um, and we are accepting donations for candy and eggs for helicopter Easter egg drop. So if you've got some left over or you want to go grab some and bring them on, we would love to have them because that event requires a lot of eggs. What is it, like three, four thousand? Fifteen to twenty thousand. See, so I underballed it. All right. Um, one more thing, one last thing. There are some fires raging in the Texas Panhandle. And it is a really, really tough situation for those that are there. So for the next several weeks, we are going to be doing an additional offering for those people in the panhandle that are affected by this fire. And what we're going to do instead of having a different time of offering or a rail offering is if you will just mark whatever you want to donate and put it in the plate as it goes around normally, that's how we'll take that up. And then we're going to send it probably to a fire department up there as soon as we have the funds collected. And with all that in mind, let's stand and pass the peace of Christ to your neighbor. church. Good morning. Sing of the battle that's already been won. There's peace that has sent the darkness. Hope that's in the blood. There's future grace that's mine today. Jesus Christ has won. So I can face tomorrow. For tomorrow's in
just reassuring to know that whatever we're going through, there is an outcome that's been predetermined, and we have a God who is so mighty to take care of us. And when we can put our faith in that and our trust in that, he is so much of a firm foundation. See where I'm going with that? Oh, yeah, there you go. Segue. I think it's, there's part of it where you're so tired because you woke up early and didn't think to go to bed early too. (laughs) Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking.
came when blue my house is built on you oh, I'm saved with you I'm gonna make it through yeah rain came when blue my house is built on you Pastor Ellen is preaching on John 11, 1 through 44, and we're still in our renewal series, and today we're talking about Lazarus, and Lazarus had become very sick, and Mary and Martha, his sisters, had sent for Jesus to come and heal him, but Jesus came two days later, and at that point, Lazarus had already passed away, and so when he passed, when Lazarus passed away, Jesus, when he got there, he really had a plan. It was for God's plan, for God to be glorified through this. And he actually went to the tomb, and he told Lazarus to come out. And he came out, and he was healed and whole. And it was all part of the plan. But I kind of feel like with Lazarus, you know, we have like a spiritual death sometimes too, where we're just tired. And... We need renewal, and we need to be revived and brought back to life like Lazarus, but with our hearts and our souls, right? Where we need that renewal um, in a different way, where God is glorified through us being revived here on earth, right? And so that's kind of Lazarus. So today, I have a little thing. This, uh, I'm going to go with the smaller one first. If it doesn't work, I'll do the bigger one. I just don't want any kind of explosions or craziness. Um, I mean, not that I don't want that, but, you know, let's just start slow and small. This represents us kind of needing to be revived, Lazarus, and we're going to put it on this water bottle here, and then we're going to dump it and see what happens. Let's just, so this represents us, and this is what's going to happen. Let's see. Okay. Well, okay, it'll do what you think. Woo, woo, woo. Woo. But it takes something that's dead and needs reviving and brings it back to life. This balloon represents us with God. Oh, oh good heavens. Um, I don't know when it's going to stop. <laughs> so, and I'm actually glad I went with a smaller amount of baking soda because I think it, I had a lot in another one. And I was like, maybe let's start small. If it doesn't work, we can always move it. But we are in need of reviving, and that's why it's really important in this renewal series to connect with that, to have reprieve, to have time with God, to re-sort of center our hearts and our minds on Jesus Christ, right? 
so that our church can be healthy and we can be healthy and we can go out into the community and be healthy. So we need to be revived. We need to be like a Lazarus and brought back to life. Shall we go, right? Shall we go to God in prayer? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Revive us and bring us back to life. In Jesus' name, amen. And all little kids and big kids yelled, yay, Jesus. As the ushers come forward, will you bow your, I gotta be careful not to kick over that balloon. <laughs> Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Lord, we love you. Thank you for this moment where we get to come in contact with you, Father. Thank you for not only letting us into your house and presence, but also into your family. Pray that as we walk with you, we will grow closer and closer to you. That you will bring us back from death and into life. Renew us, be with us, guide us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing a song again, whatever may pass, then whatever lies before me, let me be singing the Lord of my soul, oh, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Your rich. draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forever bless the Lord oh my soul
during this time, we always like to say something that we're thankful for. And today what we're thankful for is our brand new hymnals. They are here because of the generosity of the congregation, and they are beautiful. We don't use them often in this service, but if you would like to take a look at them and kind of see what they are, they are on a holder right behind this wall just behind us. And for that we say, thanks be to God. And now I want to invite up Miss Stephanie. She's got a ministry moment for us. Sorry, you have to see me like almost two, three weeks. Well, there was a week in between, but you have to see me again. But today I'm talking about something different. I'm talking about our need for nursery. And so um, nursery is actually a paid position. And we have a lot of new families coming in and a lot of babies being born. And so we want to really kind of build a foundation and get more people in. And with this being a paid position, it's great. It has flexible hours. But we're also growing in a church. We have a lot of events coming up. We have um, things that happen during the week that could use nursery as well. We have a lot of ways that we want to cater to our families. And in order to do that, we do want to try to get more people into our nursery and get them hired and put on our staff and nursery staff and help us throughout the week. Um, so there's just plenty of opportunities. Like I said, events, Sundays, of course, are another big one. But we just want to have more coverage and we want to be able to reach the families more effectively. And so if this is something that might interest you, just reach out to me. Melody Ellis is our nursery coordinator. I think she's down in the um, nursery right now. But um, she's another person. We actually had two people apply this week, which is great. But we would like to have ideally quite a few more so that we could call at any time and be able to utilize that. Um, I'm going to check my notes here really quick. Also on Sunday mornings at the Sunday school hour, um, we need help. This would be volunteer unless you stayed the whole time on the Sunday. That would be paid, obviously. But we need help with Ashlyn. Ashlyn, raise your hand. She's looking for an assistant to help her with the toddler group at the Sunday school hour, which is 10 o'clock. And also Hillary, if you ever wanted to help Hillary, raise your hand. She helps with the pre-K group. And so if you ever wanted to help and volunteer at that, if you're already here on a Sunday, you could just be there during that hour as well. And it would be paid if you stayed the whole Sunday. Um, otherwise, it is sort of a volunteer position. Not sort of, it is. Um, but, they, but they are really great and um, really just good people to work with. And so, and our little ones need that education and need to know about God. And if that's something that you feel like you could give to our kids, that would be a really big blessing to us. So if you want to, um, we would just have you go into the front office and fill out an application if you are interested in nursery and helping us in that area. And um, I think we're pretty excited. I think that's really all I have for y'all today. I'm going to try to get these kids to Sunday school, old kids church, I should say. So thank you. And yeah, thanks. Thank you, Stephanie. Those are great programs, and they're awesome to be involved with. I get to help with our block party kids on Wednesday night, and I have a ton of fun. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you for moments of peace, moments of stillness, even though sometimes they come from or come before moments of overwhelming busyness. Thank you for being able to enter into your presence to talk to you directly, Father. There's a lot happening in the world. Some good, some bad. My heart goes out to the people in the panhandle that are dealing with life-altering fires. I can't imagine what it must be like to know that that's bearing down on your livelihood and your home. There are places in our world that are torn by war. And innocent people get caught in war all the time. I pray that you would be with them, bring them comfort, and keep them safe. There are those in our congregation who are sick and who are hurting. More than I know, Father, I know that you know them, and I know that you love them. Be with them, bring them peace, and the comfort that only comes from you. Now in this moment of silence, hear the prayers of your people lifted up.
Lord, for everything that was lifted up or everything that remains in the silence of our hearts, I know that you will be with us always. Please hear our prayers and answer them and make the answer so clear that we couldn't possibly miss it. Thank you for bringing our Lord and our God, bringing us renewal, giving us wisdom to follow you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning. The scripture reading for this morning is from the book of John, chapter 11, verses 1 through 44. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been dead in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Lord, yes, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved me? Some of them said, 
could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus said again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. He was a, it was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Miss Betty. You should get extra credit for reading that lengthy scripture. I have to speak in teacher language since you're a teacher. Morning, church. You know, it's funny. I, every time I hear scripture read, I hear something different. Verse 9 and verse 10, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them at daylight savings time. How appropriate for today. Gee whiz. I need to speak to something briefly, and that is the furniture moving in this room. Uh, I intended to say something last week, and it just, I forgot. But those chairs that used to live back there are no longer there because our dear friend Coy, the fire marshal, said that they were an obstruction to getting out that door should there be an emergency those and the ones between the doors that were there. I've got some people that are mad at us about that, but you know when the fire marshal says this has to be done, you do what the fire marshal says, especially when you pray for them and you hold them in prayer and you pray every time there's a siren, then we don't just discount what they say. I appreciate their word and what they do, so thank you for your understanding. There may be a few more moves that are, that are needed. Uh, we have some friends here this morning for the first time this year. They're winter Texans and as they came in, I said, you know, there's no assigned seats. Not your head up and down, church. There are no assigned seats. Okay, very good. <laughs> Having said that, let's pray. Oh God, hear our prayer. The word that is spoken and the word that is heard this day may be for us. By the power and inspiration of your Holy Spirit, the word of God. Amen. This week I received a disturbing message. Uh, a pastor that in this conference that has pastored for many, many years passed away. He was 92, I believe I heard. And that wasn't the disturbing part. What was disturbing is I said, so when is his service? And I was told, well, there won't be one. And I said, well, now that's really odd. And I pursued it and said, I don't understand. Why will there not be a service? Well, he had renounced his faith. At 92, after having served probably 40 years in the Methodist church, he renounced his faith. The word I got was that he had read some book, and it created struggle in his heart. I don't know what kind of book would do that, uh, but I, I really grieve that. I, I just grieve that he served so faithfully, and yet renounced his faith and decided that he didn't even want a celebration of his life. Now, I'm not going to share his name because some of you might have known him, but this morning, for purposes of our discussion, I'm going to call him Pastor Joe. Uh, his name wasn't Joe, so. Um, I was left wondering, what would make a longtime pastor like Joe decide that he suddenly doesn't believe? And I doubt seriously it was reading a book. There was something else to it. I don't know what it was, but what makes other people renounce their faith, especially when they let it just die on the vine. Have you ever had anything in your life that just sort of died on the vine? A big significant part of your life? Maybe it was a relationship that didn't work out or, or maybe it was a dear friend who let you down. 
perhaps you got caught up in some form of addiction and, and it just really struggled and you really hurt from that. Maybe you lost a job and with that lost some friends that were connected to that. Maybe you have a broken spirit for some reason that we can't possibly understand. Sometimes grief, in this grief group that we're going through, I, I'm noticing that sometimes for people, grief is just overwhelming. And they struggle to get through it and they struggle to get past it because their lives have changed forever. And so as someone t will tell you when they've lost a loved one, especially a, dear, a close loved one, you don't get over it. But by God's grace and the Holy Spirit, you get through it and you learn to turn the corner. So this whole issue with Pastor Joe was very troubling to me and it left me with a lot of unanswered questions. Has that ever happened to you? Questions that are unanswered but you're never really going to get answers to. Our lesson this morning from John's Gospel can leave us with some unanswered questions if we're not sure about some things. Jesus was contacted by Mary and Martha who were some of his dearest friends. They implored Jesus to come to Bethany to heal their brother who was gravely ill. And you heard Betty read a moment ago, the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. And how did Jesus respond? This is where you get puzzled. He waited. He didn't act like a first responder and go immediately. He intentionally delayed his arrival to their home in Bethany, explaining that he did so so that God would be glorified. He wanted to make sure that God was seen in everything that happened. And it still was a little puzzling. Mary and Martha were grieving, and they didn't understand why Jesus, their very dear friend, would respond in that way, or better yet, didn't respond. Why didn't he come immediately? Lazarus was their brother, these people, these three people that lived together were like family to Jesus. Whenever he traveled to Bethany, he stayed in their home. And yet when they needed him and called upon him, he didn't come immediately. He didn't drop everything and run. He wanted God to take the lead. And friends, sometimes that's really hard. But sometimes we just get a sense that even waiting is not our best friend. We have to wait for God to take the lead of what is the next step in our life? What is the next thing that needs to happen in our world? We don't like that word wait, do we? We want things right away. Sometimes that's exactly what God is telling us to do. And we don't really want to hear that. We want an answer right away. But friends, during this Lenten season, I think it's very appropriate for us to wait. To allow our souls to be renewed in God's time. And sometimes that's not a lot of fun, to wait. I don't understand what Pastor Joe's thought process was. But he didn't let God wait and lead him. I don't understand that any more then Mary and Martha understood Jesus not immediately coming to their home. Again, unanswered questions. This is a long lesson, and again, Betty, thank you for reading that very long lesson. And I thought about abridging it this week, but then again I thought, you know what, this is good homework for y'all for this week. Y'all fill in the gaps that we don't deal with this morning directly, because there's a lot in this story, there's a lot of meat in this story, and there's no way to chop it up without losing some of that meaning. So between now and celebration of Easter, why don't you kind of look through that and fill in some of the gaps on your own. This story is one of my favorite. I whispered to Wade when one of the verses were read, this is one of my favorites. Verses 21 and 22 I especially like. And could you put that on the screen for us? Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now catch 22. But... Hear that, church? But even now, I know God will give you whatever you ask of him. That's a huge but. That's one of the biggest buts in all of Scripture. I love that. Because what that says to me is, I don't understand, Lord, but I trust you. But I trust you. 
And that's really hard for us when something happens in our life, when someone that we love dies that we have loved for a very, very long time. Lord, I don't get it. She should have been made well. But I trust you. Whatever the situation, I saw in the paper yesterday an obituary for a baby that was nine days old. I don't understand. But God, I do trust you. And I also trust that you're going to one day make those answers clear to me, even though I don't know now. It may be when I get to heaven. Though then it might not matter. Brothers and sisters, have you ever been puzzled by the actions of someone you love? But you were determined, by golly, I'm going to trust God anyway? In our Wesley group Thursday, one of the participants said, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hebrews 11. And I thought, wow, that is such a good input on this. Because so much of this we don't understand, and yet the writer of Hebrews knows it quite well. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. As we read these words, we better understand Martha's conviction in verse 22 with that but. She'd seen enough in her experience with Jesus to trust that ultimately he would come through. Ultimately he would meet their need in the way he chose because that's how God would choose. They trusted him. Jesus continues in 25 and 26 with some more crucial words that are crucial in this story but more so in our faith when Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And then he asks this very important question, do you believe this? For those of us who have stood at the bedside of someone that we loved as they took their last breath, do you believe this? That's a question I really want you to consider amongst yourself. That's the question we have to answer for ourselves during this Lenten season. Because sometimes we do need our faith revived. We need it renewed. We need it strengthened. Life hasn't been good, maybe. And we need something to give us a shot in the arm to help us know that we can trust God at all times, in all places. For some of us, renewal is resurrection. When our faith grows weak, as it obviously did with Pastor Joe, when we aren't sure that we believe anymore, we go to Jesus' words and we remember when he said, Do you believe this? Brothers and sisters, turn to your neighbor and say, Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Yes. We must. It is a cornerstone to our faith. Those two little verses summarize the gospel for us in powerful ways, but also make us look one another in the eye and say, do you believe this? Because if you don't, that's where, we're, where our faith needs to be revived and renewed. Brothers and sisters, at some point, hopefully sooner rather than later, we must claim this faith for ourselves. We can't be what I call coattail Christians. Ellen was raised in the church. Ellen went to church. I don't remember not going to church. I sat with my parents. I sat with my grandparents. My parents were up there in the choir and I sat with my grandmother. But I have to have more faith. I have to own it for myself. I can't have faith and say, well, my grandmother was a Christian, so I must be. My parents were Christians, so I must be. No, brothers and sisters, we have to own it for ourselves. We don't inherit that. We inherit some amazing genes sometimes, but that's not one of them. We have to claim it for ourselves. And then we reclaim it. And then we reclaim it over and over and over again. We used to have some curriculum uh, in the United Methodist Church called Claim the Name. Claim the Name Christian. And that is what we have to do. I always tell confirmands, don't 
be confirmed and baptized because you think that's what mom and dad want or grandma wants or someone expects of you. Take the time you need to study and own it for yourself, to claim the name Christian for yourself. It has to be your own faith decision. But back to Lazarus. Jesus arrived. He showed up and he said, where have you laid him? And Jesus saw how they were all weeping and grieving and it made him be moved to tears, which brings us that very famous verse, Jesus wept. And why is it famous? Shortest one in all of scripture. When you say to somebody, you have to memorize scripture, they say, especially a little kid, Jesus wept. That's my scripture. That's where we see these verses. Jesus began to weep in the New Revised Standard. You can see the rest of the story. He went to the tomb. They had discouraged Jesus from going in because, ooh, it's been in there four days. It ain't going to smell very good. And Jesus sort of just, did you notice he wasn't rude? He just disregarded them. He walked on in the cave, which was probably what a tomb was, a cave with multiple persons buried. And he walks in the cave and he begins to pray. And then he declares quite simply, Lazarus, come out. And friends, that's the question I would ask of some of you today. Dale, come out. Karen, come out. That is the question that we're asked today again, Shep. Come out. For all of us, we're told that Lazarus came out. He was partially bound with strips of burial cloth. That was typical. And Jesus said to them again some of the most famous words in Scripture that says, unbind him and let him go. Another one of my favorites. Because you see, we can relate to that. For some of us, we need to be unbound from something that's been holding us back. And I don't know what it is. That's a private thing between you and God. But there may be something in your world that's been binding you and keeping you from enjoying all the fullness of life that God intends for you. And so in this coming week, I want you to just sort of reflect on that because that is resurrection. That is renewal. That is what someone needed to remind Pastor Joe about. They needed to grab him and say, what? You know what, friends? That's something that someone near you needs to hear this week. Come out. Unbind him and let him go. There is nothing in this world, brothers and sisters, that can hold you back ultimately. Nothing. Nod your heads up and down. Come on, you're not too cool to do this. Nod your head up and down. There is nothing in this world that can bind you when our Savior holds you. It's just not possible. You can be loosened. You can be freed for our Savior. There's a reason that every funeral service in this room and at the funeral home and at the graveside, any funeral service that I do begins with these words, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. That is what we believe and that is what we proclaim at funeral services. And I hope this week, brothers and sisters, you will live your lives in such a way to honor that, to fulfill the new beginnings, the renewal, the freshness of spring that you see in all the flowers that are out. Aren't they amazing? Every time you see a blue bonnet or a paintbrush or a beautiful mountain laurel, that is the freshness of spring. That is the freshness of resurrection, brothers and sisters. And I want you to remember that gift to you through every flower you see. If you are like Pastor Joe and you have some doubts and you have some questions, please come talk to me. Talk to Pastor Allen. Talk to Pastor Kit. Talk to Pastor Grady. I think I heard his voice. I think he's in the building this morning. We want to talk to you. We want to assure you that there is nothing in this world that can bind you that Jesus can't ultimately unbind through the power of the Holy Spirit. If you've never asked our Savior for a new start or for a new beginning, please do. Don't let anything get in your way. It might just be the renewal that you've needed for a very, very long time.
Thanks be to God. The invitation never goes away. Amen. Friends, let's pray together. Oh God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the freshness of your word, oh God. And how every time we hear it, we hear something new. Oh God, open our hearts this week. Don't let us be like Pastor Joe. Instead, oh God, let us be just the opposite. Let us see that you call us to great things. And you love us in great ways. Oh God, you have blessed us so that we might be a blessing to the world around us. Thank you for that gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I had the blessing this week, Wade and I had the blessing this week, of sharing communion in Copper's Cove with Pastor Tommy. It was awesome. And Newly, I can't leave Newly out, the 140-pound standard poodle. Right there, attentively waiting for his portion. And it occurred to me that we should be that attentive and that eager to receive the blessing God gives us through this sacrament. Because, brothers and sisters, our Savior gathered in the upper room with the disciples right before he went to the cross. And he took bread. He blessed it and he gave thanks. He broke the bread and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is a way to be renewed. This is a way to be revived. To be reminded of the sacrifice of the cross. When the supper was over, he took a cup and he filled it and he gave thanks. And he passed the cup around the table where the disciples were seated and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Friends, won't you pray with me? Oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you prepare to come to this table, know that this table is open to all who are here this morning. If you believe in Jesus Christ or you desire so to believe, the invitation is open. This isn't a Methodist table. It's not Ellen's table. It's Christ's table. It's always exciting for me to share that with you because I believe in that so strongly. As you come, you can uh, relieve a communion rail offering if you wish. Nothing is required to come to this table. But sometimes we feel a desire to respond to the grace given to us through the sacrament. And the way we do that in this church is through our helping fund offering that we receive at the communion rail each week. If you would like to participate in that, that enables us to help with people that come in our doors needing fuel or a light bill paid or shelter for a cold night. Um, again, nothing is required. Please don't misunderstand. We also have gluten-free elements. If you should need those, just let your server know and we'll be glad to provide those. Will those who are assisting come forward at this time?
Surrender, I need you now. Hold oh, my heart now and forever. My soul cries out. Here I stand, high in surrender. I need you now. Hold oh, my heart now and forever. My soul cries. awesome how God works all things together for good. That phrase is perfect for what I just said. Your grace holds me now. 
sometimes we're in that in-between zone where we're not sure what we want to do or, or how we can do it or, or whatever. And your grace is always there for God. God always holds you. Always. But let me encourage you not to wait too long to let God lead you in the way that God intends. We're going to wait just for a few minutes for you to come forward if you so desire. As the service begins to close, if there are those, those who would unite with this church family, we would invite you to come down and we'll celebrate that. If you would like to come down and just pray with a pastor, we would be honored to do that with you. If you're kind of wondering about what God's got for you and where things are standing with you and God, come during this time and let us pray with you. Here I stand, high in surrender, I need you now. Hold my heart, now and forever, my soul cries out, healing, forgiven. Look where my chains are now, death has no hold on. Grace holds that ground, and your grace holds me now. Grace holds me now. Grace holds me now. Grace holds me now. Once I was broken, but you love my whole heart. Sin has no hold on me, cause your grace holds me now. Heal and forgive it. Look where my chains are now. Death has no hold on me, cause your grace holds that. Grace holds me now. Grace holds me now.
me just expand on what I said last week or repeat what I said last week. When the service is over, I'm going to remain here so that if those are want to pray, they can do that. If you want to pray by yourself, that's okay. Always, the rail is always open. If you would like one of your pastors to pray with you, extend your hands. I should have said that a while ago so that we'll know that. Otherwise, we'll leave you to your time with God. But know that we're going to be here. And we're going to be eager to be a part of whatever it is you need this morning. But for those who want to go on to Sunday school, let me say this. Do you believe this? So whatever is holding us back, I ask that God unbind it and let you go. So that this week you can celebrate God's goodness, so that you can revive your faith, and you can take a step forward knowing that God is with you no matter what you face. Isn't that awesome? In the strong name of Jesus we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. You are dismissed. Well, I still got your